so in this lecture we are going to uh, discuss the first chapter the first chapter contains four sections propositional logic propositional equivalence predicates and quantifiers nets is quantified so we will now go for the first section the first section is propositional logic and in this we will now define what is meant by a proposition so a proposition is actually a declarative sentence which is uh, either true or false now what is the meaning of a declarative sentence a declarative sentence is actually something which uh, declares a fact so if a statement is true or false it will become a proposition there are some statements which are neither true neither false those statements will not become propositions let us see some simple examples for example one is the smallest prime so is this statement true or false that is what we will identify first of all we know that one is not the smallest prime number because the smallest prime number is two and uh, therefore this statement is actually a false statement and the fact is that one is neither prime nor a composite number since this statement is false this statement that i have given you this statement is a proposition so it is a proposition let us go to the next example every continuous function is a differentiable function now is this statement true or false now we all know that a differentiable function is always a continuous function right but a continuous function need not be a differentiable function so the the statement that i have mentioned here this statement is first of all false right because the fact is that every differentiable function is a continuous function so this means that is this statement that i have given you the statement is this statement a proposition or not a proposition yes it is a proposition because a proposition can be either true or false so it is a proposition right now do we know a function which is continuous but it is not a differentiable function is there is there a function which we know that it it is a continuous function but that function cannot be differentiated now the that is a very famous function and that function is f of x equal to mod x mod x is a function which is continuous function but it is not a differentiable function how will you justify this uh, quickly you know that this is the graph of fx equal to mod x do you see that when you draw this graph you don't have to lift your hand you have to draw it like this you don't have you don't need to lift your hand right so this means that it is a continuous function right because and it is not broken anywhere just see right so this graph is not broken anywhere if you have a graph which is broken in in pieces like this if you have a function which is broken into pieces that function becomes a discontinuous function but here the function is not broken everywhere okay uh, it's not broken anywhere right so this means that for every real number x this graph is not broken everywhere this means that this function is continuous for all real numbers correct now the question is uh, i will also discuss why this function is not a is not a differentiable function so so what do you think it is uh, it uh, is a reason because you see that this graph has a vertex at zero so here there is a vertex if you have a graph in which you have vertices like this here are the vertices i'm circling the vertices then that function is not a differentiable function at that point at which point at the corresponding point alpha or here the point is beta so this graph that i'm showing you aside is is not differentiable at three points namely the three points are alpha beta and gamma so i can from this i can now conclude that this function mod x has vertex at which point at which point at the vertex uh, vertex at the point x equal to 0 right so it has a vertex at x equal to 0 and therefore this function is differentiable everywhere but it is not differentiable at only one point which is that one point that one point is x equal to 0 so if you ask me the derivative of the function mod x at the point 
I will not be able to give you the answer. But if you ask me the derivative of the function f x equal to mod x at some other point, suppose at x equal to two or at x equal to minus three, any other point apart from zero, then I will be able to tell you the derivative of the function f x equal to mod x at that point. Okay. Now just have a look at this particular function. The first question that I will ask you is, is this function a continuous function? So the answer to this question is just look, is it broken anywhere? No, it's not broken everywhere anywhere. So this means that this function is a continuous function. Is it a differentiable function? Have a look at it properly. Is it smooth? Does it have any vertices? Yes, it is smooth. It does not have any vertices. So this means without knowing what this function is, I, I don't know what is this function f x equal to. Okay, still, I can tell you that this function is a differentiable function, right? So the answers to both the questions were yes. Let us write the next question as identify the propositions. Now you remember that what are propositions? Propositions are statements which are either true or false. It, I do not have to care whether it is false or whether it is true, but I should be confirmed that this statement is true or this statement is false. If I'm in an ambiguity that the statement uh, uh, may not be true, may not be false, something like this, then you have to think that it is not a proposition. So let me see some simple examples with you. So first is 2 plus 3 is equal to 4. Now clearly this statement is false, but I don't really care. Still, it is a proposition. Yes, it's a proposition. 5 plus 7 is 12. Yeah, this is true. That's good. But is it a proposition? Yes, it is a proposition. Next statement is x plus 3 is equal to 7. Is this statement true or is the statement false? Now here you are in an ambiguity that I may not be able to tell whether this statement is true or this statement is false. This statement can be for some values of x, this can be false. So some for some values of x, this can be true because if I choose x equal to 4, the statement will become true. If I choose x equal to 5, the statement will become false. So for some values of x, this statement is becoming true. For some values of x, the statement is becoming false. So there is an ambiguity. So this means that this is not a proposition. Next statement is answer this question. Now you cannot say whether this statement is true or false, right? This is, uh, for example, questions with exclamation mark, question um, statements with question marks. These people will be all be out of my space of propositions. So this statement is also not a proposition. For example, look at this. Do not go. Now, now what will you conclude? Whether this statement is correct, the statement is true or the statement is false. Again, there is an ambiguity. So this statement is also, this is a statement, but it is not a proposition. Have a look at these, these people now. x raised to y is equal to z. Is it a proposition? We just have to write it yes or no. Can I say anything about the statement x raised to y equal to z? Nothing. You can choose any value of x. You can choose any value of y. That need not be equal to the value of z that is in your mind. So the statement is false. I'm sorry, not false. I will write it as it is not a proposition. I'll just write a no. What time is it? This is again not a declarative sense in which has which is either true or false. So this is no. Today is Thursday. This statement now if, if you actually see today is a Tuesday. So this statement for us right now is false, right? So this means that it, it is either true or it is either false. So the statement, yes, it's a proposition. The moon is green. This is a false statement. So yes, it becomes a proposition. And uh, Read this carefully. No conclusion. You cannot say whether the statement is true or false. So this will not become a proposition, right? So the definition of proposition variables. So variables that represent the propositions are called propositional variables. For example, these statements that we have 
declared as propositions instead of writing the complete sentence for example the moon is green okay i will not always write the moon is green the moon is not green and so on i will just write a one single alphabet for that statement so they will be denoted by just what those statements will be denoted by just simple single alphabets okay say p q r s and t and so on right so now we know that a proposition has either value true or it has either value false so those values are called as truth value so so now we are confirmed that a proposition will always have a truth value because the the what is the truth value the truth value of a proposition is true i will i will denote it by capital t if it is true okay and if it is false i will denote the truth value as f so somewhere we know that whenever we are declaring a sentence this statement is true or the statement is false so what is the truth value instead of saying true i will just say it capital t or i will just say it capital f example the smallest prime number is 2 now is this a proposition yes this is a proposition because the statement is what the statement is true so what is the truth value of this particular statement the truth value will be denoted by just t the next statement is q which is is mod x mod x is a differentiable function this is a proposition yes is it a is it a correct proposition is it true or false we know that it is false so what is the truth value of this particular statement the truth value of this particular statement is f